Hi everyone, my live stream will be starting in approximately three minutes.
Hello everybody, this is MonPJC and welcome to my live stream. I uh, hope you've been having a fantastic day and it's really nice of you to come along if you're all out there or if you're watching this on the replay. I haven't actually been playing for a little bit. I've been off doing some other bits and pieces which we're going to talk about. But in this video, uh, this live stream, she's going to run for about an hour and a half till just before nine o'clock. I'm going to come off. And predominantly, what we're going to be doing is let's get rid of that because it's now 9:30 and we can now we're now online. We're going to um, do a bit of a world tour, and it'll actually be really helpful if I put my headphones on. So, what I want. Ah, I should be able to hear some cows and sheep and all sorts, which hopefully you've all been able to hear out there. I'm just going to check my uh, stream labs. That's all okay. My audio seems to be okay there. Let's pop back into the game. There we go. So, let's go for a bit of a tour. So, this area here is a jungle environment, as you can see, it's pretty obvious. And I started here on this server in August 2018. So it's not quite a year yet, 10 months, I suppose. And this was the first main thing that I built, really. Uh, this is uh, fairly obviously a villager spawner, which we will pop up there and have a look at at the moment. But what I did is I started out in this area by pushing back all the trees and just trying to make a lot more space. And as you can see, we've got some um, readable food supplies going on here as well. And then down the bottom here, we've got some wheat, we've got some carrots. Uh, I think I've actually got potatoes down there as well. Let's have a look. It's been a while since I've been over here. What are these? Yep, that's spuds. So I reinforced this wall back here like that. And then over here, I did actually catch some fish and I'm not sure what that one is they were both salmon that's weird it's changed that's very odd they were both salmon when they started uh, I got some mushrooms and some bits and pieces and there's a little bit of a path going out here which takes me out to there is a cow in the tree what the heck are you doing? Hang on, I've got to take a screenshot of that. That might have to be the stream picture. Um, okay, that's a little odd. So just through here is, it's not the sea, it's actually a river. The render distance on my server is 10 chunks. That's a restriction that they put on us. And the, the, the game is a bit juddery. I found this is, um, I normally play on uh, Ubuntu with uh, Minecraft Java, which is, well, this is Minecraft Java. But uh, what tends to happen is that is way faster than this, because this is my Windows computer, and it's streaming at the same time, which means it puts a lot of load on it, and it's exactly the same computer, just dual boots between the two but it's an old computer it's about seven or eight years now and it wasn't massively fast at the time and now it's just really struggling with doing stuff like this so I struggle with about 60 70 frames a second when I'm doing this so this is another little thing that I was doing what I wanted to do with this area is actually make it into a very sort of Aztec type environment with these uh, villager buildings and stuff and I really haven't done that much in this area even though this is where I started this was from a magazine I saw the pictures of it in there and I built this up and you can actually drop down in there and I'm not going to actually do that because I never actually built the exit so you could get back out but it's basically a, a little dungeon with a with a with a bit of chest bit of chest with a chest and some loot in it, basically. That's it. Uh, this is going to be mega laggy. Uh, 
unfortunately. So up there is our villagers. So let's go up there. And the way we do that is by going up. Wow, that's proper tripping out the lag on here. It's only when you're playing the game. It's been sitting here fine for quite a while, actually. I don't know whether it's the data pack that I use. The uh, the data pack I use, you might notice there's some very slight variations to the normal game. It's fairly vanilla. We've got a round sun. Um, this is from Vanilla Tweaks, which is done by Exuma. And you can see the game's like proper lagging me out now. Oh, goodness me, that's terrible. Um, but yeah, we have a stray golem down there and we have villagers so standard iron golem farm nothing massively spectacular there and I'm proper lagging out there we go come on game and so this is not how what I used to record on oh, I knew that was going to happen so I think what I'll do while I'm in here I'm actually going to go into this I might actually Hmm. I don't know, I might turn that resource pack off. But this is the resource pack. It's not particularly heavy weight. I don't actually think it's going to cause me a lot of the issues. It's actually put me back into a very vanilla looking game. Let's give this a go and see what we get. Just see if it um, plays a little bit better. Because obviously there's functions running within there so it might just give me a bit better control over the game well, that's that does actually seem to be a bit better strangely enough oh that might be something I have to uh, mention yeah that's a lot better oh there we go data packs obviously have an impact I'm gonna take my shield off there so we can actually see what's going on look at my frame rates like now oh wow Frame rates are let through the roof. Oh, okay. Right, that's that problem sorted out then. So, yes, we've got the villager farm up there. We've got all of these different bits and pieces going on. So, let's go and have a look underneath this cause. There's a doorway here. Oh, yeah, this is really nice and smooth now. Something very laggy in that data pack. I'm going to have to investigate that. Proper causing issues. So this is a little base area that I put together. And this was predominantly so that I could basically work in this area, work out what was going on, do a few little bits and pieces. Got a noisy portal over there. A few chests, double bed. Um, there was a book. Those bits and pieces. This is a map. Is this of the local area? No, it's not, is it? Where was that a map of? It's a village. Oh yes, it's the village that we're going to be going and having a look at. That looks very different to that now. And I did actually find a woodland map as well. And I went and found out where this place was, but I didn't go in. So I haven't explored that yet. So this is my general little area. There's a water source under there. Got all the normal amenities. There's a big hole down there, which I'll explain in a minute. And then through here was the bottom of the iron golem farm, right where the iron would come through and would come into here. But there's now a hopper underneath that going down, which I'll show you in a moment. Likewise, through here, we put a little enchanting room together, just something very, very basic and simple just to get started. We got some Navarak here. And then I made a mass burner uh, which hasn't got anything in it at the moment it's got some coal in it might need that and then in here we've got some of those growing just punch the button and they all all get collected in the chest down there or not as the case may be because they're all going somewhere and i will go and show you where that is portal obviously so coming down here down the bottom there is normal strip mining there's nothing very interesting i can sort of uh, bore you to death with that sort of thing 
but in here is my main sorting area which I started with and this works on a principle that each of the different farms that are running up there let's close that a second actually feed into this so if I hop up here what we actually have this is the water source stream coming down from upstairs so you know, I can actually open it so the items drop down here and then they get flushed along this pathway here so this looks like a bit of a wooden tube there's a there is a wooden sign there I know there's no ice under here but items are going quick enough they do actually go around the corner and the idea is they come around here and then they then land on there like that as you can see on the item on the on these and I was going to do the whole thing with water streams so this one comes down from the iron golem and there's also one that comes down from the sugar cane as well we can actually hear a, a golem dying up there so in here our stack system I just did some little extra things as well like put a chest on the end here with a switch so I could just dump loads of stuff in there if I didn't want it so you can sort of just lock it chuck some rubbish bits in there if you don't want them flick the switch what I should actually do is make a space where I can put like a, a shulker box and then I can empty the shulker box out into the the system for feeding so along here we've got all the normal items uh, different stones wooden planks cobble logs all this sort of thing and then in here we've got our sugar cane coming in I don't exactly collect a lot I should automate it a bit more and then I've got two main items here which are poppies and iron blocks now iron blocks you might be wondering where I'm getting them from well I'll show you in a minute because I deal with all that there's nowhere for iron normal iron ingots to go they go straight through we've got leather and we've also got some uh, redstone which actually looks like chicken eggs oh, is that that's actually what's in there yeah there is actually redstone in there so this is a non overflow type item so we then have these overflow buffer chests and I think I've got some junk in some of these when I started off. So it's a great big massive stack of chests here. I literally only got to leave this for a few days and it completely chock-a-block fills up with iron and I just basically sit down here and make loads of iron blocks like this. There we go. And this will actually empty out all of these all the way up now. So I get a load of stuff like this. It's just to show you what I do. Obviously it collects poppies, anything else I've got junk of. That one's mainly full of poppies which I turned into rose stuff. More iron ingots, more iron ingots. There's those signs I just chucked through a minute ago. So you can see these proper stack up with items. So I come in here every day or two and basically go through and turn all of this into iron blocks. Which I could, if I wanted to, chuck back in there, but I'll just chuck them in there for now, like so. And then they go down into these chests under here. So again, I have exactly the same system. Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of chests. And in the bottom here, as you can see, I've got a full double stack box there another full stamp stack box there and if I can reach the third one you can see so I've nearly got three double chests full of iron blocks and as you can see we've got an awful lot of poppies coming through um, yeah there is a lot of poppies coming through so at some point this is probably going to be filling up yeah look so that's getting pretty close to being full on the poppy front so I need to find something I can do with the poppies and what I'm actually considering doing is this is 1.13.2 this game I'm actually looking at potentially when this reaches the full mark then I'll keep the poppies and I'm going to do with all these poppies that's an awful lot of poppies to have but what I'll probably do is start composting them and getting bone meal out of it 
so that's basically what we've got going on there. I mean, I want to make like a chicken farm and different bits and pieces. But yeah, there's quite a lot going on in this area. I've got a chest with a few extra bits. And I've got my own uh, Mon PJC backpack and ender chest. I'll just there goes another iron golem. It's not super efficient, but it's as you can see, I've got way more iron than I need. In my ender chest, I've got loads of shulker boxes and a few other bits and pieces. So, yep, that's all been going really well. But this was very much a very early game somewhere to start. There isn't actually anywhere else to go. Actually, this is the original Hobbit hole, this bit here, that I dug down into when I started. There isn't much more in the area to actually look at. So, what I did next was basically go into the Never. So let's do that. Please hold. Have some lifting you pick here. There we go. So, this portal, as you can see, is up in the roof of the Never. Uh, the original one is down in amongst the normal Never. Nothing very exciting to show you down there, just normal Never, basically. But in here, this is going to be our Never hub. And these I've got train lines around. And what I've actually been doing, I spent a huge amount of time digging this out. There is a massive cube area in here which has been dug out flat and this will allow me to build my never portal that I want to do or never hub in here, this area. Uh, it's going to be like a grand central station that will take you to all the different places in the map. And if I peek over the edge here, you can see there's my... That's my ladders that go down to where my original portal hut is and my original portal down there. And there is really very little around this area. There's not even a... Um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the word. A fortress. There's not even a fortress in this area. But yeah, so I carved out this area. I made it nice and square. And I thought that would be useful for when I want to bring all the different train lines in and we'll make it out of uh, different materials. And a lot of that stuff got put into this. This is a smelter that's been running for like ever. Um, as you can see, I've been collecting loads of never rack. Doesn't run when I'm not here, but I've got some chests for the never rack. And then over here, this is a wood charcoal. So wood goes in the top there. That creates charcoal which I feed back into here and fills the chest up and keeps that well loaded. So, um, yeah, that's more than enough in there. Let's take that and just refill. That's, that's full up. So that's the portal we came in on. From here, we've got some different areas. We can go to the sea, there's a village, there's a free build area and an area where there's horses that spawn. I'm uh, including good places to get different resources. I haven't been down there for ages, so we're going to have to go and explore that. Uh, that way is out to the kingdom. There is quite a big kingdom area that I've built some stuff on. But while I'm here, first thing we do is go up into the Never Void. And there is a uh, pigman up here. Is he friendly? Hello. You seem friendly. And a tiny little bit of XP. Dink. Thank you very much. That's mainly because this is big pole and you probably guessed it. There is a gold mine at the top here. So let's go check it out. This is one that I've seen used on Hermitcraft. And you can see it's starting to come into view there. That looks pretty awesome. And also it's been put together by Il Mango. So this is a cut down version of the design. If you look very carefully off to the right there, you'll see iron golems. Just having a slurp on my tea or my coffee. And I'm actually going off the edge here. <laughs> uh, don't try to drive with only one hand. And there is a random pigman there. That's not good. 
Why are you there? Hmm. <coughs> y yeah, I need to stop you from being out of spawn here. Because I don't want that. So in here we have a big mechanism, which I'm going to come back to. Have I got any carpet laying around here somewhere? Uh, let's sort that little problem out first. Nope. Nope. I think I used all my carpet. There's none up here. Uh, is there any in... There's a chest up here. Ah, perfect. A couple of them. Right, so we'll just, just do a bit of maintenance and sort out this Mr. Zombie Pigman. Who is currently where he shouldn't be. I'm going to very gently nudge you. And take that torch off. I've only got one torch. How is that a thing? Hello. Um, so I want to put some carpet down here. And you're in the way. So if I just move that like that. And. No you're, you're still technically on the block. So if you could just go just that little bit. Oops. Sorry. 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 Okay. That's. That's upsetting for him. Right. So. Let's go back up here. We will start at the top where all this works. Shut that, shut that. Dunk up there. So up here we have a glass room so we can see out with loads of pigment. And if I climb up the roof here, we can actually got duck to get through that gap. We can actually see that the pigmen spawn out there on those blocks. We've lost one of the iron golems. He fell off, um, which is a bit unfortunate. But the zombie pigmen all spawn out there. And then when they get angry, normal mechanics means they come charging over here to attack me. And the idea is, is that from in here, they can get me. Now, this uses entity cramming. So these hopper uh, or these mine carts that are located here it's actually 24 in one space if there was any more entities in that area it would suffer from suffocation so as soon as a pigman falls in there he dies and because he's died and he's within range of his friends they get angry and they all come charging over as well so we can kick this off by firing a bow through here like so and you can hear zombies pigmen all coming charging towards me from different angles and pass by into the hole my goodness that's noisy uh, so yeah so they all die in there there was one I left out there he was do get ghasts around here as well. I don't know where it is. There's, where is it? There's that one out there I left. He's supposed to keep everyone angry, but it doesn't seem to work very well. So what then happens is our items drop into these uh, mine carts or underneath here. And I should have got a load of, where did my XP go? There we go. So all the XP seems to accumulate in one place. I'm not sure what that is like. That's a bit of a bug or something. But as you can see, we've got seven levels in one go there. So we're just going to hop off here. So there's a single hopper that drops into these chests. And I thought it'd be a bit fancy. I'd have a hopper mine cart that goes around collecting the items. Just like this. Goes all the way around. I did put a switch so I can actually turn it off if I need to. This appears to be empty now anyway. And then there's these hoppers here which grab the items as the minecart goes back past. Next level down, items come filtering down through here and out the bottom there. But ideally I have this little enchanting area here for me to be able to get some more bits. And the carpet's just to stop stuff spawning. There's glass on top of that stuff out there by the way. So the business end of this is in here where I've got a item uh, sorting system buried in here. So 
this is the I think that's the outputs. Yep. So that's the output. So this collects the iron nuggets, which obviously can be uh, turned into iron bars like so. This one then collects iron bars, which we can put more in there. Put them nuggets in there. Now the other thing that comes through, which is sorted, is uh, flesh, which goes out the back there into this hopper. And as you can see, this hopper is actually full up at the moment. It needs more coal up here. Um, and that will burn the rotten flesh and the idea is is that will actually get turned into leather by doing that and then over there our swords get processed oh, that's my torch there we go blocking it let's take them out there and put them in there so the zombie flesh will get cooked chuck 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 ding goes through and you get more leather and over here these iron swords get burnt down and they get turned into more iron nuggets over here so the idea is you can collect all this stuff up and eventually end up with a load of gold which you can then process over here into iron blocks eventually and end up with a big stack of iron blocks and over here is a spare furnace for me to make more coal which I really must need remember to do so that's how the iron farm works iron gold it's a gold farm so we'll now go slowly out of distance there is only the one yeah there's only one iron golem missing so I have to get out there and fix that oh yeah so the idea of the iron golems is for this so when magma cubes spawn they're attracted and try to attack the iron golems so they head off the ring at the back rather than clogging up the mechanism on the front. There we go. And we'll just go sort this out because you never know, we might get some magma cubes. Do, 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 do. Those magma cubes are hard to come by. You're big. I hit. Why am I hitting you? There we go. There's your little buddies. Oh, magma. I'm going to get there. Just the one. One bit of magma cream. There we go. So that's how that all works. So that's half hour into the stream and we've still got loads to show you. There's a zombie pigman down here somewhere, isn't there? I can hear him. I don't know where he is. Right, so I'm going to stop. He's up there. Are you the one I pushed off? He must be. So I'm going to start off by going to the kingdom because it's probably the biggest area and the place where I've done the most amount of stuff. And it's unlikely I'm going to get through all of this stuff any other way. Why have I run out of iron? I haven't got a... Let's just quickly just make ourselves a minecart so we can travel there. Oh yeah, was there any... Oh yeah, I could take that coal from up there up there, couldn't I? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Right, let's hop in here and go to the kingdom. It's not the fastest tunnel system in the world, but it does mean I don't wear out of energy. And I will drink my coffee en route. There's a couple of little places on the way. What I might actually do is use something like command blocks or a data pack to allow the train system to work. So that as I approach different areas, the switches get flicked for different things. There we go. Might 
take that one with me because I've got loads in there. I'll take it on the way back. Right, so. Uh, portal. In we go. And this is the kingdom area where I've been doing a huge amount of stuff. So firstly you notice we're in a village but this isn't a normal village this is one i've actually made so all these little huts are identical and they've all been put in there's one of those very naughty uh afk fishing farms over there but yeah so all these little houses and they've all got a slightly different layout to the bed we had to get all the wall going and all sorts of loads of stuff going on here uh, and you'll notice there's these flags it's just to represent this area and what these villagers do and you'll notice there are some villagers around because there is an iron golem the villagers are normally over here somewhere there they are yep they're all over here having a little chat so this is one of the things i want to do for 114 is make this a much safer more robust area for this little uh, village and this little village is on the outskirts and you can see in the distance here lots of other stuff but mainly I brought people's attention to this area in my videos with this big tree um, because underneath all of this is the um, end portal which is down there so you've got this nice little farm area so let's just show you around here for the moment i made this little meadow area in here which is not bad looking and then this i did for november this was a, a like a memorial for remembering everyone who died in the first and second world war etc so this was put together it's something i like doing on my servers each time i do something and then off in the distance you can see there's some some turrets and things and, hmm, wonder what's over there uh, there's a big wooded area which doesn't naturally blend in we'll, we'll see what that is in a minute as well but first of all we're going to go down into these caves and go and explore around here and show you what i've got so this cave was custom made it was made to sort of make it look like a little bit more scary more creepy and then as you come around here it's a little bit more confusing like there's an end rod why is there an end rod it's like that's a strange thing to have in this world an end stone and it was just sort of when i was playing through sort of like saying why is this stuff here this stuff shouldn't be here it's not supposed to be in the game not on this world and it was mainly because I was trying to make up this story of these caves uh, having something special in them, which is obviously going to be the end portal because it's got this big dungeon, which is largely untouched other than lighting, which we follow our way through here. And then in here, I've got some captive mobs. So we've got a, uh, a poisoned spider in there. I'm not going to tell you how hard that was to get in there. And a witch both been named I can't remember what though so they don't disappear and then through this labyrinth we go upstairs around this corner into this massive chamber where you can see there is a skeleton and this skeleton is to represent the end dragon or at least one of the end dragons and I've got these little areas which tell us about uh, the great battle that took place between the villagers and uh, there's a story on the wall and the end dragon which is laying dead above us or its skeleton um, this is a chamber used to change villagers back when they got converted into zombies so it's a bit of a torture chamber a little bit scary that water looks disgusting so there's all this in here there's um this book area which I've left pristine it's all blocked off uh, and then we've obviously got the, the skull and the skull is original this was originally here in the game when I was digging through 
I've got it on these iron bars, which looks quite quite, quite cool, like making it hold up. Um, and then these ones on the side. But the back of this was largely missing, so I've rebuilt it, and I also built a tail on the back of it, which you can see from upstairs as well. Now around the corner here, you can actually put a glass floor in, so you can actually see through into the end portal, which has been completed. Down here, we've got some little captured mobs, so we've got a little baby zombie who's stuck in there. Uh, there's some more very unhappy villagers and a normal zombie in there. And this red lighting was really good at making the caves or these tunnel ways look a lot darker than they really are. As you can see. So this goes around in a complete circle little areas where stuff can spawn and because yeah this is back in here so this goes through here and then down and then we can see more ender items or end items and then we come through here and here is our end portal and I've left some of these blocks were missing so I sort of like put glass in to sort of represent where stuff would be normally in place it's quite good because you can hear spiders and different stuff rolling around. And I added these lights in. Sorry, I'm moving the mouse around a bit too much. Put these lava lights in, which just help light the floor. Left this lava here as well. So the, the spawn is gone. And that's the end. There is nothing in the end. It's no different, any different than anywhere else. And then in here, we've got this massive caged off area, which is like, do not pass. It's too dangerous the dead walk these halls now and I've really not explored that area anymore but I just wanted to stop mobs coming through when I was going through here so that's that little area I left the light in pretty much as it is go through the gap there now on the other side here is a, a resource that I come to a lot and that is that down the end of this tunnel is my skeleton spawner so down the end of here around the corner here there we go there's a skeleton spawner standard chamber for the skeletons to spawn in um, rates are not fantastic but I'm on here on my own so I'm not necessarily that bothered there we go they go through, uh, they go along there, and they go up above an elevator. There we go. Whiz past. And then they drop down here. And so they go over my head and drop down again. And then they collect full damage at the bottom. This is a little area here for some melons, for some food. I've been keeping arrows in there. I've been getting some bows together. Got some decent pair of boots there, but I couldn't repair them anymore. Um, just little bits and pieces. Obviously, a little book area. It's a little bit more fancy than the other one. Um, I can't. Oh yeah, the uh, things over there, isn't it? I've got a lamp in the top. And then they drop down here. Uh, can be quite useful you can get quite a lot of drops from this just from entity uh, cramming and this is really good because this stops you from getting too close to them carpet on the top there and we've got a chest full of stuff that we can collect and then you can just I think it's normally about a one or a two hit punch depending on their health when they come through so there we go we can collect some junk that way there we go so that's a good way of collecting XP and bones and stuff pretty much get a lot more a lot quicker now from the um, from the gold mine but again I can probably do something with it I don't know what that button does this was another little working station area again for when I was doing all this stuff there's a load of cobble in here. I tend not to throw anything away. 
loads of assorted bits and pieces, um, some coal, an anvil that's still in decent condition, and there's tunnels and stuff around us. These you have to put in using pistons. Oh, I didn't show you upstairs. How do I get upstairs? Oh, that's right. So over here, there's this very janky looking stairway and you can get upstairs into this area where you can see above the skeleton of the ender dragon. And I got this roof which has got like a bit of an edged curve to it and there's some more statues down here and you can see the tail it's got like this hook thing on the end different armor and stuff and the glass ceiling was also put in so that you could actually walk up above this so we just pop up here and there you go from here you can actually look down and if you've got a connective glass texture on this it does actually look really cool with all that so that's pretty good so I'm actually going to have to sort out my data pack and find out which things are causing it to major lag out. So this is the end portal section. So we head back upstairs through the maze of tunnels. Yep, past the witch. Who is always as you can tell, unimpressed by my presence in this world. I'm try not to fall off of this, which I have done a few times. Here we go. Oh, mind the end rod. And then hop out and we'll go over to the main castle area. You'll notice it's persistently daytime on here as well. That was uh, another reason thing I wanted to do because I was just getting fed up with fighting mobs all the time and that. And there is the time and a place for fighting them, but not when you're actually trying to do massive amounts of builds, especially when you're on. Now you can see these towers here. These are guard towers, and there's another guard tower there, brick one. And this area is gonna get fenced off because it's gonna be a major city area that we're going to be having and I've just had Siri woke up so I'm not sure what I said there that woke it up but yeah there's a little farm area and this tree lined area here and that's a woodcutter's shed and these trees are mainly being planted because I wanted the spruce wood up in the main castle area because it's one of the major materials they use and over here I've been growing loads and loads and loads of wheat, as you can see as well. There's an empty spot there. I've also been growing some massive trees over there as well. So yes, these are going to be guard posts where you can you can actually go up the top of these and actually view what's up there. This pathway now travels down through a valley, and there's hillsides over there when they render in. As you can see, my render distance just isn't far enough, but it just looks like plains. But there is big mounting areas over there in the very far distance. And from here, we can see what looks like a big sort of airship. And you will be able to see it's in the style of steampunk. Actually, my render distance is way better behind me than in front. So this is going to be the main pathway up into the city, which has still got a bit of work to do comes up through here but yes this is going to be this is my steampunk city well it's what it's going to be is my steampunk city so there's going to be major gates there coming through and you can see we've got a castle keep on the on the top up there and this steampunk airship again is from uh, I got the inspiration from a magazine it's not 100% the same but it's pretty close and when we come up here in the future in front of us there is going to be a museum and shall we go and have a look at the steampunk airship first 
why not? Let's pop over here. I'm going to build a pathway around here for this. There we go. Come up here. Put those chests. Put some wood in. Never know. I'm on scout scrounge for some torches. I'm just having a look around. There's some coal. Uh, we've got landing lights. And we've got these planks that draw out. And it allows you to get across here. And I think, did I put fireworks in any of these? In the video that I did, I had some fireworks which I put in because when you click these, they um, they actually power the droppers and uh, fireworks come out. And we've got a music box and we've got a little area and it's very funky looking. And in the back here, we've got storage with actually nothing in any of it because I'm, well, I'd, I'd sort of get a lot done, but never quite completely finish. And then we've got the, where you can stand and drive the ship from, and you can see the village out there, and you can see the landing, and I haven't turned that one back on, uh, to come in. And then underneath, down here is a bit of a bar area. So we've got some nice seats and we've got this piston style floor. And at the end here, we've got, well, I don't know what that is, like a big oven or something, I guess. And we've got a cooker and we've got some fridges and furnaces and stuff. So it's just like a, a fancy airship to go flying around in. And I've got myself stuck. There we go. I better turn the landing light back on. Otherwise they can't see where they go. There we go. So that's that. And from here you get a beautiful view across the valley down into where the farmland is. And the village off in the distance there. And it starts to render in some of the main castle. Which as you can see has got a major wall around it. And the castle keep up there. Which we're going to go and explore in a minute. First we're going to have a walk around the village. Or the town. And these are actually called... Um, what are they? What's the word? Wards. So where we're standing now will be the outer ward. This is where the normal civilians live. And some of the major like support buildings for the area are. Uh, Outside the main castle area, ward area, is the farmland. So this will be a protected area. And one of my plans is, is to try and get guards in here of some sort, which are going to protect us from illagers spawning. Then we go up into the mid ward, which is going to be protected by this stone wall. All the way around the outside here. We can see we've got much nicer looking little area. We've got a portal to get us back. There's a main house there. This is a stable, which is uh, currently under construction, as you can see. I'm still working on this area. But this is going to be a large stable, and there's a storage area upstairs. There's my horse, which I think... Yeah, you have, haven't you? You've you've lost your bit of... What is it with this game and despawning things? Hmm, okay. We'll go around on my horse. horse. Where's this? There was a rope here holding you in place. That's not good, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put you out the back here with the llamas. There we go. You're more likely to stay here. And wander off okay so let's go have a look so we go down this stairway here into the main city area and we've got villagers down here and initially I put in this little wooden hut thing which is just to encourage the villagers to breed and you see they've been doing quite well we've actually got an iron golem in here as well so this is a trading area. Who's pushing me? You. You're a librarian. Um, we've got this 
trading area again inspired from some magazine drawings and online pictures I've seen and this cabin uh, tavern that's the name tavern so uh, excuse me sir hello thanks so these are going to be little these are little tiny shops each of these buildings will be a little shop or a home for someone uh, a villager to work from and they sell different items and I've actually been storing different items like redstone tools that one's got earth in it uh, this one's got stone so if you go in here there's a chest with loads of stone uh, there's nothing up here I haven't decorated upstairs yet but they've all got proper rooms to be decorated and filled out so there's all these little shops there's the wood shop and there's some more over there but this is the tavern this is known as the creeper inn you see we've got creeper signs on the outside and again using the same pattern that was in the ship and green carpet no no green car oh, green carpet here which has been used to try and keep a color scheme so in here got the green carpet tables we've got our uh, dispensers here we've got uh, bottles of drink on the wall over there like it'd be a, like a shelf full of bottles and then up here in this tiny little area is some rooms where you can sort of stay the night if you want to there we go it's a single bed and a double bed in there it's a very quick hello do you work here you're an armorer you don't work here i'm just going outside thank you very much so i use these brilliant these are fantastic for using to make them look like fences they're really cool like this so getting lots of detail in that one's got a balcony on it as you can see that one's got flower pots outside try and break the build up with some cobblestone a little bit hello i feel like you're like a policeman or something i really feel intimidated um so over here the rest of the tavern has got this little area with some drinks out and in here we've got a local standing on the table are you the same guy that was inside okay um and then down the bottom here and there's actually a wooden path which i've only just made that goes all the way around the inside here there's this little garden area so it's like a little pub garden hello you're a weaponsmith you're not the same person so along here again we've got some more shops these ones are a lot smaller a bit more dinky as you can see and then here this massive building here is again still being worked on i, I flit around between one project and another um, but this one primarily is going to be a massive hotel type thing so you're going to be able to go in here there'll be a reception desk and there's floor upon floor going up i have a donkey over here as well who's quite useful there's some more little shops here very similar style to those just breaking up the pattern of the styles as you can see so here we've got hay and this one we've got trees by the looks of it Yep, so I seem to have some trees and seeds and stuff in this shop. So that's that. Uh, along here, some of these haven't got any item, anything in the item frames. It basically means they're, they're not selling anything yet. There's a well. Everyone's going to want the well for water. We'll go over there again in a minute. And then this is going to be the market area. This is going to be a real hive of busy activity. We've got these stalls where you can buy things from. There's little pop-up stands. This area's got some more, some more stalls over there. Then there's this really large one in here as well, with a big roof, which is going to be quite fancy. Some of them have got signs up the top, some on the sides, and there's like these wooden areas to show you where to stand, where you're trading, and that. And then over here, we're going to have the animal market so this is going to be for sheep and pigs and cattle and all sorts of things and there's some more stalls around here as well 
bit of an open area here because this is going to be the main restaurant so we've got the tavern where people can go for a drink but where are you going to go and have something to eat well it's going to be in here this is going to be the main place to come and eat and as you can see we've got a fridge and cookers and food sources and again we've got these tables that are laid out in here for people uh, that's a picture obviously and we might have it like another seating area garden out here as well and as you can see we're all protected by this vast wall all the way around us upstairs in our restaurant we've got some more seating might change the wood out because it's it just blends in too much with the surrounding area another nice outdoor seating area another little cozy seat there just perched in the corner here Need to do something with this terrain here make it look a bit nicer but yeah that's that's the main market town so this is the mid ward area and we can now walk back out so there's huge amounts i've actually been doing as you can see since august last year last 10 months been doing quite a lot I work full time as well, so there's only so many hours I can spend playing here. I head up past the villagers. We're slowly breeding as I put more doors in. And then this area here is going to be like the main reception house. So there's this courtyard, important people would come into here. And then there's this very grand building. I'm not actually going to take you inside because it's hollow, basically. Or well, you can watch some of the videos. But there's mainly going to be a main reception room. There's going to be a large kitchen. There's going to be a church, cathedral. Well, mainly a church area on the end here. Banquet hall. And then like a rector's office and stuff there. So there's still lots of work to be done. But it's mainly getting the big builds in and making them look something. The other thing I want to do is build some barracks here as well, where all our guards would be, because they'd obviously be right near the entrance here. Along from here, we're going to the, uh, the the main feature of the area, which is the castle keep and the inner ward. And down here, you can actually see I've got dungeons built underneath here. We have a garden area. And this garden will be for the main house. We're going to have some balconies out the back. Put that in place. Just to give people an idea of what it looks like. So we go up here. Now the main inner keep is where all the really expensive stuff is kept. So it actually has this little wooden drawbridge here. And these are the controls for bringing the bridge up and down. If only they worked in real life. Um, but from up here, our guards would have a really good view of the surrounding area out into the distance. So they walk along here. Again, I've brought in a bit more of the bone white and stuff. This would be so good in 1.14 when I can change out these torches for proper lamps. So again, very formidable, big keep. We come in the main doors and we're met by Dave. Yep, I call this guy Dave. So he's a guard protecting the hallway because in here I've got a, again, another little local area for making stuff, processing materials. I'm on the scrounge again, there's a lead I can tie the horse up with. Um, I'm looking for more torch material. I don't seem to have anything around. A load of snowballs from clearing the roof off. Um, yep, you can get up to the roof. Anything in these? No, these are empty rooms. But you can I mean, you can't really peer out there. You can actually get up onto the roof. I'll take you up the other way in a minute though. some basements but then in here we've got this sleeping quarters area for our guards and this guy is one of our guards he's in, uh, in an armor stand here you can see he's got his tools he's got his wardrobe they've got their tools on the wall these um, 
trapdoors work really well to make them look like frames. And we've got another unit there, all their armors on display. And then if they come around the back here, they can go around in a circle, but this is the, the dining area for all the guards. So again, we've got cookers and different bits and pieces. We've got water, food out. We've got some pictures, some nice lighting. Um, these guys are all like in deep conversation. There's a music box, banners. So this is very much all for the guards down here. So um, this is where they would come back into the keep. And see, look, you've got pictures like the bed. This is the bedroom, so to speak. This is the canteen. Now, if we go upstairs, we come to this area, which is where Dave's mate is, or his twin. This is the main room for the boss man. So it's protected by an archer in the area. And in here we've got guards standing to attention. And here is the boss man. He's the man in charge of the whole area with his uh, table. And he's got this very large. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Very large throne area up here. Oh dear. And there's some little back doors here which is just going to be some little halls. And I wanted to sort of make them a bit like prep areas for where, because I noticed when visiting castles and that, these uh, important people don't get ready in a main room. They have these little side rooms they'd go into. So like this one here, they'd pop into the side room and they'd get themselves ready and stuff. I think there's a chest under here. Yeah. So yeah, that's all of that. There's a trapdoor there, so you can get up here and join in. Good view from there. Take out any baddies. Thanks, Dave's twin. And then the stairs go up a bit further and go out onto the roof. Which again, you can get a really nice view from up here of the surrounding area. There you go. Right, so downstairs. Now I need to finish the stairs off going down here, as you can see. I started doing some work here. This is a level down. And as you can see, I've got another large sorting system, which is being constructed. I've got a large number of items here already. And there's going to be another load all around that side as well. It's going to be the main sorting, collection, burning chamber area. This floor in here is going to be more big rooms for people. Just to sort of, uh, what would you call it? Like accommodation or drawing rooms and stuff like that. But down here we have our dungeons. So we've got some spare beds. We've got different types of rooms in here so we've got dunking chambers we've got these prison cells and i can hear a skeleton around down here somewhere stuff does tend to spawn down here there he is he's in there i don't know whether he got in there on his own or not yep and then there's these things these are rooms where you lock your get locked in you haven't got any space i've got the lights under the floor there like that all these doors open. Little rooms, there's bits of blood on the floor. Well, that's what it's supposed to look like anyway. That skeleton doesn't look too happy in there. So we can go out the back door along this corridor where we've been stacking beds. And then in here, this is a more of a higher. Oop, we've got a visitor. How did you get in here? Might have been that. So this is a bit of a more high security area because we've got oh, an arrow stuck in the ceiling. Now we've got these metal bars and bits of blood. We've got chains where people can be tied up into different places. And there's a lot more chambers. And these have got doors which allow you through into the next section. 
We've got stacks of beds lined up around the place. Got these rooms, some have got three beds in them. So it's like really tight, pushy accommodation. And this area here, you can actually see outside. So they've got that, that's that main area. And again, over this side, we've got more rooms and there's even more rooms down the end there. And around the back here, we've again got these torture areas where prisoners can be tied up and stuff. And these little control rooms are where somebody will sit and like watch what's going on outside. And they've got these like bars and fences in place to protect them. So if we go down another level, I can show you a bit more about this area here. Um, it's a mass storage area with lots of different things. And the key thing for this is that through here, there is a zombie. What are you doing in there? How did you do that? I'm not coming down there and hitting you. Thank you. What are you doing in there? You bad boy. I'm not supposed to be able to get, can, I, can you even get out of there? No, you can get out of there. It's got my item sort of, yeah, that's that in there. Hmm, okay. Right, so let's go through here and I'll show you from the beginning. It's always a really good place to start, the beginning. So upstairs here is a train line that's coming in with a hopper uh, emptier system. So we can chuck stuff in here like so. And the hopper minecart comes up here, unloads, and when it's been unloaded and is empty, this triggers this circuit which sends the cart back down the mine again. These items then come down an elevator here into this first four-way sorting system. And the first four items that are collected are coal, cobblestone, iron ore, and gold ore. And they go into these uh, containers for processing because what we then have underneath all of these are more hoppers feeding the items from these chests all the way along here into a long queue and go down into oops this one and single furnace in here there it goes it's got some coal in it so the coal gets fed along and actually will fill fill this up now i'm actually going to take a block of coal so i can make some torches so that will actually yeah process all that up now this collects xp while it's doing this so if i stick that in there should be I get a load of XP because the furnaces store the XP as they go through it. Wow, went up to 26 levels. That's pretty good going. There we go. So that furnace now processes stuff that goes through it. It's a really good way of collecting XP, as you can see. And then those items then go down into the chest underneath it. Oh, there's some junk laying around up here. Oh look, some more torches. Just what I was looking for. Um, I will leave that here. Thinking there. Oh look, some coal in there as well. I'll leave that there. Anyway, so that's the first item system. What then happens is round here we've got this silent item elevator. So the items then go through into this these row of hoppers and this has got a little clock on the back which drives the items all the way up the top so I could actually replace that out with like a a different type of item elevator so the items come up here and they rejoin this queue which then goes back into the next room oops which has then got more hopper uh, sorters so we've got a diamond one and also so I'll go outside 
through the labyrinth of little doors. And as you can see, we have all these extra chests along here. So we have things like diamonds, more iron, gold, lapis, and redstone. Plenty there. In there we'll have stone, which I'll show you. Yeah, because any of the items that are processed, like iron or gold and that, obviously get uh, smelted down and sent up the item elevator and then come along here into this storage area. I can't remember what that one is. That's dirt. We've got granite. We've got dorite, which I've been using quite a bit, and andesite. And then we're obviously going to have more built along the side here. And then I have an overflow chest when all of this stuff comes running along here. You see there's plenty of room for overflow up here as well. An overflow chest full of other stuff that I've been collecting as I go along. And this train line is going to be one of the commuting train lines which go through the, through the area. So very different from the other one I just talked about. So that's the mass storage system. And I'm gonna have loads of chests and stuff in here and maybe mine carts that process the materials into other things and a brewing area, etc. So let's go and follow this mine cart track down here. This goes down into our, this is all underneath the castle. So when this is all loaded, everything's running underneath down here. So we've got a passenger train line here, which goes out uh, and goes out to the village where we came in through the Never Portal. So that's something else that I'm working on. I'm working on a lot of different projects. So down here, is the first level caves we first started doing some caving down there you can see I've collected a few items and we've got a mine cart here which we can send up and a load more coal see I've got loads of coal laying around down here um, yeah so that's there that comes down here sorry I lost track of what I was talking about this comes all the way down to bedrock there are some more caves around but they're just caves and we've got some more stuff like iron uh, gold ore so let's show you this how this works so in here I've got a short range tunnel with tracks on and automatic uh, returning uh, mine car for when I'm doing all the strip mining in here that comes along and dumps all these items in here. I can then decide what I'm going to do with them, whether there's any bits I want to keep, or I want to actually sort of process into stone, for example. So let's take a few of them like that. I would then just stand here and fill up this chest up here, which then slowly dispenses everything into this minecart at the bottom. I then go wandering off down these tunnels and do some mining. Now one of the things that I've got down here is, this is a shortcut because the train line goes around in a circle, I've got a passive mob farm which I'm not sure really works but the items come into there. Uh, it's not bad that's not terrible. It's just not really running very quickly. Oop. Oh, that's the lag spikes I keep getting. And that would be the sound of a lot of mobs dying. There you go. That's interesting, because that was a, lo a lot of dying things, and 
no drops. So where are all the drops going? Okay, so on the next cycle, which is less than five minutes, everything in here should get washed down. I'm interested now to see whether this stuff is despawning before it gets washed through. There goes the water. They then get pushed over to the edge. here yeah we've had more stuff come in well, it does work sort of obviously I've just got to stand in the right place for this to actually work anyway that's what I was doing over there do, 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 do. right so let's go back along here so we put stuff in the chest send it along here back here, back into the mine cart, which is now full, press the button and away it goes. And it will now climb all the way up to the very top, back into the sorting room. Gets up there a lot quicker than I do. I've got a video of Halo Phoenix going up and down in this. And she's going, oh my God, I feel sick. She's riding in the minecart. It's quite funny. That goes up here, and there is our minecart. Which is now unloading all of its items. So if I just help it along here. Once that's unloaded, off it goes again, and we'll go and replace itself back down the bottom. Ready to be loaded up again by me next time we'll use it. There's nothing up there. Um, oh yeah, there's a back door here. A little secret exit from the castle. So that is all of our castle area done. That was loads. So this stream has now been going for about an hour and 50 minutes, which is mega, I reckon. So as you can see, we've done a huge amount we've walked around and looked at. And this is only one of the major areas that I've actually built. There's actually a small seaport and uh, there's other areas that we can go off to as well. There was where I was recording my noobcraft videos, etc. So yeah, there's, there's quite a lot around in this area for this build that I've actually done and as I say it's taken me quite a few months so you can see there's still loads of work to do around here and it's just gonna I think it's just it's gonna take me years but it's sort of what I wanted I wanted a long project that was gonna spend time doing that was gonna be fun to actually work at and get through all of this stuff and actually sort of build different environments and get all the different farms going and the buildings and stuff so that when you actually look back you can actually go wow like there's actually a proper castle area up there uh, and these villagers live in this the shadow of this like giant castle area which is up there which you can't quite see from here but there is a hut in here somewhere which I typically go up in. Probably one of these first ones. So I go up here 
and then you can see from here you can actually see this whole like castle area that's out there and you can see the the buildings you can see the airship uh, and then in the foreground we've got all of this scenery and stuff about as well there's other villages off in the distance to the right which are naturally spawned ones which I want to fortify and do some more stuff with as well so that is my world tour so far and I'm going to cut my stream there because I think I've done plenty to show you around all the different stuff that's going on around me I might just take a screenshot of that for the stream when I put it back up I hope you've enjoyed watching this and I hope you stayed around to watch this please follow me on twitch if you can just head over to twitch.tv slash monpjc uh, if you're watching me on youtube then again please hit the subscribe button don't forget the little bell so it goes ding and then it reminds you when my, my videos go up uh, i'm going to be doing a lot more videos again now i'm really getting excited about doing more of this stuff and i can't wait to see from you and hear your comments in the future. So thanks very much, everyone, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.